In five, four, three, two. Uh, what up, uh, Facebook and YouTube? Stay hard. Uh, here is the uh, third vlog of today. It took me a long time to realize what I, I was referring to at the end of this video, where there was a real particular uh, book search that is very important to understanding culture besides these two. Um, so hopefully I can wrap up all these uh, 50 minutes of vlogs today in just five minutes. Um, and the search is aggressive music. So I mentioned that, um, I'll just go ahead right there right now, um, looking up what people were saying about aggressive music before rap music was a thing. Rap music became a thing around right here in the chart. But we can see just when recorded music started happening in the late 1890s, uh, people were talking about it way back then. I mean, way back then, 1920s, aggressive music. And so I clicked the button right here from 1800 to 1952. And the idea is deterring bootleg copies. So the music itself was aggressive. It has aggression built into it to prevent copyright uh, exploitation. Um, and so what we saw with the invention of the internet and e-books was a near exact similar thing with uh, books like 48 Laws of Power, author Robert Greene, 33 Strategies of War, uh, aggressive books in just a similar way, sort of as... Um, it has sort of extortion built into the uh, media, and it's ultimately a joke, you know, I would say. Uh, but with the Beastie Boys, you know, they had aggression built into their music to prevent bootlegs. Uh, and, you know, they were originally a punk rock group and stuff like that. Uh, they were, um, punk rock was referenced in Debbie Harry's uh, rap song called Rapture in, you know, like 1980, and signifying that the end of a disco era, that's why it's called Rapture in my opinion. Um, and she referenced uh, punk rock and hip hop in her song lyrics of Rapture and the music video. And that's, I think, the cue that the Beastie Boys took to change from punk rock, punk rock and be like one of the first rap bands with their al album License to Ill. She sort of gave them the, the license. Um, so. It took me um, a couple of hours to re remember that about the searching aggressive music and aggressive books and stuff like that. That's just why we never saw aggressive music before in culture, because it wasn't recorded, just like with ebooks. We saw a similar thing, author Robert Greene. Uh, but here's all the random things that I thought of in between that. So, searching Generation X on Ingrams, I found that even in the 1850s, people were talking about Generation X. And that's. Uh, close to 150 years before Generation X as we know it today. You know, and of course, Generation Y and Z, uh, Millennials and Gen Z, and even Gen Alpha today, I'm sort of on the fence how I feel about that. Um, you know, always first, that's the slogan that I say, Generation Alpha, always, always number one, Generation Alpha. Anyways, so, um, it's actually a Roman numeral, so that would make, um, me, not a millennial, it would make me a generation XI, also known as, you know, in Roman numerals, X1 or 11. And then generation Z would be XII for 12. And so generation alpha is actually generation XIII, and after that it's going to be IV for 14. Anyways, um, so it's Roman numerals as far as they were talking about... Um, how they were categorizing different species and stuff like that. This was, I think, even before um, that one guy's well-known book, the guy who took a voyage all around the world, and he's known about evolution, uh, name of, I can't think of his name right now. He also married his first cousin. That's how I found out Einstein married his first cousin. Um, the Origin of Species is the book title. I can't think of his name. But it was a lot of stuff like that. If you search on Ingram's Generation X, it means the 10th generation. It's a Roman numeral. Also, uh, I don't know why it says five there. I was supposed to link to this music video, and I'm already at five minutes in this video. Let me check. Yeah, almost five minutes. So at the very introduction of his new music video called Tone Deaf, um, it sounds like the Red Hot Chili Peppers song 
Love Roller Coaster, at least the intro. And I know that song from Beavis and Butthead Do America, the movie. Uh, I have another video of mine that's on Facebook. And it is the first video that I made after the power outage. And there's a scene in the video game when there's like a talking dog that's talking to the character about a man who's stuck in a tree who was parachuting. Now he's stuck in a tree. And it's reminiscent of the, the scene from Old Yeller about Timmy being stuck in the well. And when I researched that on YouTube, I found out that it's the Mandela effect. There was no Timmy ever stuck in a well. It was uh, something about being stuck in a tree, actually. So everyone's misremembering that. And sort of meme takes on a, a life of its own. Um, but it synchronizes perfectly that scene with what happens in the video that I recorded. I just forgot to have the link there. It's somewhere on my Facebook page. It was when the power first returned after the blackout of February uh, 21. And uh, so here's also, I found out Tonight's the Night is a song from Betty Wright in the disco era. And that's referenced in deep cover that I've been making all these vlogs about. And it's sort of like, like old Yeller and I'm yelling. That's, I'm referring to Janet Yellen right there. Uh, you know, uh, she's the secretary of the treasury. Um, in the movie Scarface, um, in one of the introduction scenes, uh, the way that Al Pacino runs up the stairs is related to a video that I made in uh, lockdown. You know, I can't go to the gym or whatever. So I was at the house by myself and just going up and down the stairs. I suppose I could get up in a second and show that if I remember. I'm supposed to insert the video link there, but I was too lazy. That's a video game that I have to order for PlayStation 2. Um, oh, I also have um, recently discovered that I'm related fifth cousin, fifth removed to uh, Henry David Thoreau uh, from FamilyTree.com, whatever the name of that is, and I'll have to show that eventually. Um, also, the reason that Deep Cover, the song, is so significant, um, and even though it has no cover versions, it's still significant because it was on GTA San Andreas Radio. Sort of, uh, it's sort of reaching out to the younger generations um, from way back in the 90s. And this video game was released 2004 and became one of the best-selling uh, pieces of media of all time. So now I've finished up the notes with the aggressive music Ingram. And I guess that's everything. I'll just show um, how I became like a stereo master. And from delivering stuff to apartments, um, stairs are very uncomfortable. And this is actually referenced in one of, one of the Scarface scenes that we'll just show. So I'm going to have a walking pace, but I'm going to skip steps. So I'm not going to run up the stairs, but I'm going to have a walking pace like this. And it is sort of a way to walk up and down stairs, like you can go backwards very um, cautiously and carefully. Um, you know, just because we can't really work out um, elsewhere. And I found out the guy who made the movie Alien, before he even became well known and was authorized to make that movie Alien in the 1980s, he made a commercial. Um, showing this concept in one minute about like a bread delivery boy, and I'll have to link to that. It's just about um, exercising on stairs. And that's all for a blog of today's the third. Have a good one. Stay hard.